Hello and welcome to another video. This is the second in the Context Manager series. Uh, in the previous video, which I'll link in the description, I kind of showed the hard way to set up Context Managers and how it works under the hood uh, with the with statement. In this video, I'm going to show you kind of the easier way and the way that I always make Context Managers. Um, so without further ado, let's jump into that. Okay, so I have the context manager from the previous video. Uh, you can see that we've manually implemented the double end, double under enter and double under exit functions. Um, and so we're gonna show how to make a uh, another, uh, another context manager here, but in a much simpler fashion. And the thing that we're gonna use today comes from the context lib module. Uh, so we're actually going to open up t2.py and we're going to re-implement this context manager using context lib. And so we're going to do import context lib and we're going to build a context manager. And the nice thing about the context lib module is it makes it a lot easier to write them. You use normal Python exception handling code, normal Python raising code, um, and the only kind of weird thing is we're going to be writing a generator, a very, very special generator, a one generator, uh, which means that it only yields a single time. And so uh, we're also going to be using a decorator and the decorator is where all the magic happens. I'm actually going to do another video that's going to be more advanced. That's going to show how that decorator works under the hood. Um, but you can just kind of, you know, shield your eyes and pretend that it does the right thing here. And that decorator is called the context manager decorator manager. And it decorates a one generator function. So uh, we're gonna call this, you know, my context. Uh, it's gonna be similar to this CTX over here. And we're gonna type annotate that because we do that in all of our videos now from typing import generator. And we also need a tuple. And your generator is going to, or this function is going to be annotated with generated return type. This decorator will, you know, magically translate it into the proper context manager type. Uh, we don't have to worry about that. And so we're going to do arrow generator. I'm also going to link the video about generators in the description. I might forget that, so leave a comment if I forget that. Um, and generator has three types. In this case, we're going to only be annotating the first type, which is the yield type. Uh, in our case, it's the same as the return type from double under enter. So that's going to be tuple int int, and we'll leave the, you know, send and return types as none. <laughs> I shouldn't have said return type. That's just going to confuse you guys. Um, but anyway, the, the first part of the generator is all that you need to type here. And similar to this code down here, we're going to be writing code before and after. Uh, but in this case, we're going to be using the yield statement as kind of our like run the block of code here. And so translating what we have over here, we're going to have print before. Uh, we did have some special exception handling here. So we're going to make sure to uh, include that inside our handling here. And so we're going to do try. Instead of using return, we're going to be using the yield statement here, 4299. This is kind of how we send values to the as portion of the with statement. And we have uh, exception handling here where we're going to check for foo error, which I guess we also need to define foo error up here. Uh, and so we're going to just use normal Python exception handling here, except foo error. Um, if we want this exact messaging, we can do as inst here. So we can do this, oops, redirect that. Um, and since we're suppressing this, we're not going to re-raise it. We're just going to, you know, eat the exception here. And if we wanted to also, you know, print that we're not suppressing other errors, we can do accept base exception as inst. And we're going to re-raise here. Normally, you don't need to do this. So I'm just doing this to show what we're making the equivalent of over here. Um, you can also print, you know, if we wanted to print after here as well, that'll also work. This is this has a subtle difference in the exception handling case. Um, like you, you would actually want to do this if you wanted to print in all after cases. Um, but I think it's simple enough to just show you guys this here. That way the, the code is a little less confusing. But anyway, this is essentially equivalent to this class over here. And you'll note that I didn't have to define any special double under enter types. 
I didn't have to deal with this, uh, you know, exception type triplet. I just was able to write mostly normal Python code, except for this kind of yield is the, the bit of magic here. And we'll go over what actually happens behind the scenes in another another video here. Um, but let's uh, let's do this. So we would do let's let's actually take this same two examples that I had down here. Um, so we we have with my CTX as x1 x2 print inside print x1 equals and x2 equals. Um, okay, cool. You can see all the. Just making sure you can see all the code. The only thing that we're missing here is a colon. Um, and if we run this now, Python 3t2.py, assuming I've got everything in here. Yeah, you can see we basically get the same output as before. We're running the before code. Uh, then we jump to the block inside. That's when this yield happens. And we print, you know, we were able to pass through these two values to the as statement down here. Uh, and then once this was done, we printed the after, so it ran after that block of code. And if we take the, you know, exception raising example, so like this one down here, so I'll comment that out. We've got, you know, we can also pre-assign this. You can say like ctx equals my ctx, print before ctx, with ctx, print, boom, raise, runtime error, what? Uh, this will be the case where we don't suppress the exception. We can change this back to foo error in a second. Oops, let me keep this open so you can see the code. Uh, Python 3t.py. And you can see here that, oops, that's the old one, t2.py. Uh, you can see here that we are able to print before the enter happens. So before this before runs, we print before ctx. Then when the with statement runs, we run the code before the yield. Uh, then because we raised an exception here, it actually raised that exception out of this yield. You can, you can think of it as coming from this yield statement. Uh, and then we caught the base exception here because it wasn't, it didn't match foo error. And then we re-raised that exception here. So it kind of just looks like that we raised the ex this exception normally, and this didn't change anything there. Uh, but if we change this again to foo error, and we run this again, you can see that we were able to suppress that exception, so we can stop it from bubbling. Uh, but anyway, I find that using contextlib.contextManager is the easiest and by far the best way to write context managers. I can't think of a reason why I would ever write the class unless I needed some like weird state inside, but even that seems pretty unlikely. Um, you could always return a stateful object from this yield here instead, uh, instead of having to you know write a full class out for that. But anyway, Hopefully this was interesting or helpful. If you have additional things you want me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one.